Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this webinar, during which we're going to focus on nation brands, the reputational impact of COVID-19, and what we can learn going forwards for nation branding strategies. My name is Claire Dewhurst, the Director of City Nation Place, and we're delighted that Jose Torres, the CEO of Bloom Consulting, has chosen to share this brand new and very interesting research with the City Nation Place audience. We're both delighted to have with us Niall Gibbons, CEO of Tourism Ireland, and the observant amongst you will have noticed that Rebecca Smith from the New Zealand Story is not with us at this moment. We're still hoping she will join, but she, she's not made it for the start of the webinar and we didn't want to keep you waiting. She is, to be very fair, it's two o'clock in the morning in New Zealand, so um, let's keep our fingers crossed. Before we kick off, can I draw your attention to the live comment feed below this broadcast window? This is for you to comment on what you hear and to ask any questions. These questions come through to me and I will do my best to ensure that we answer as many as possible. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. We'll be live tweeting our key takeaways using the hashtag CNP webinar. And also to let you know that both reports that Jose is going to reference will be available after this webinar from the City Nation Place website. So now I'd like to hand over to Jose, who will share his screen and provide us with an exclusive preview of this important new research. Over to you, Jose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, and I'd like to say thank you, Niall, for, for joining in. Um, and I, I have to say also thank you to my team. I mean, uh, both Gonzalo, Felipe, Chris, Olga, and all the analyst team that helped me put this together and the entire Bloom team. So thank you very much. Um, so just a quick, a little bit of one page background. Bloom Consulting is a nation and place brand consultancy. We're specialized in research, um, in uh, strategy uh, and in implementation. Uh, for this research, uh, we worked in straight collaboration with our sister company called D2 Analytics, which is a big data company. Out of this research, we have published two reports. We have developed two reports. One is the impact on uh, COVID-19 on, on the crisis management on nation brands, and from the other side, also the impact on tourism behaviors. Uh, I'll just be focusing on, on this, on the, the one on the left, uh, which is the impact on nation brands, but so you know, as Claire mentioned, you can access this, uh, both reports downloaded for free, um, both in the CNP website and also in Bloom Consulting uh, website, which is bloom-consulting.com slash journal, which will be available very soon. Now, focusing on nation brands and looking at the, the objectives of our research, we wanted to understand, um, and we felt like in the obligation, it's in our DNA, we are a data-driven company, um, and given the pandemic, what would and how did the pandemic impacted uh, nation brands, or did it impact nation brands? Uh, and when, what we mean by this is how the crisis management from governments, um, if this has impacted at all uh, nation brands, and ultimately, if it has uh, impacted um, uh, the uh, appeal uh, towards countries to invest, to live, to work, to study, uh, among many others. Now, when we talk about crisis management, and this is so interesting, when we talk with governments and when governments consult us, we see a lot, you know, a lot of concern about crisis, right? So countries look at us and say, hey, I have a tremendous crisis. This is going to affect my nation brand tremendously. And we say, well, careful, nation brand is, is, is many things together. A nation brand is many things together. And you have from perceptions to image, and then ultimately you have to emotions and so on. So normally we, we explain this to clients that because you have a crisis, it doesn't mean that your, okay, perceptions in that specific moment may change, but they won't last. And people will tend to forget. Um, um, it, 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 it differs, so it's not a general rule. But, but here are some examples. So we have the Edward Snowden, the NSA scandal uh, in the US, in the Obama administration, the whole WikiLeaks after that and between that. Um, the Chilean crisis. So like last, you know, last year <laughs> we had the Chilean crisis and is people, you know, are people internationally like changing their perceptions towards the, the country? The bushfires of Australia, even if there's a moment of change, you know, in a few months, this is gonna go on. And disappear. And another crisis probably will affect perceptions and will affect um, uh, image and build a perception uh, that will lead into an, a, an image like Brexit, for instance, right? So it depends on the type of crisis, if it's a public governance crisis, um, if it is a identity and culture crisis, uh, or if it is a history and land crisis. When I say crisis, it's how people perceive a crisis. So people may think it's a governance crisis and it's not. But anyways, I'll, I'll go into that in a second. So what really affects 
uh, which type of crisis and what is the criteria to understand if crisis affect uh, uh, image and affect nation brands and affects perception. There's actually uh, a, a series of criteria. So one of the things is like if a crisis is too prolonged, so if it's happening over and over and over and over again, uh, that will then alter the image. Or if it's a big, big crisis or something that is, is uh, has a high level of intensity, right? So, so it depends on the type of crisis uh, and depends on the circumstances um, that ultimately it will impact or not uh, the nation brand. What I was trying to say in explaining this whole thing about public governance, identity and culture and history and land uh, are these three, th three things here. So we talk about perceptions, right? And crisis in general, and this is not just in terms of crisis, like these are the three things that combined, you know, what you think about how a government is managing their country and so on, um, the identity and culture, how people are, and then the history and land. The combination of these things, if it's happened repeatedly over time and over time and over time, it will impact and build an image. If not, it will stay there. It will disappear, right? So it will dissipate. So it has to be recurrent or it has to be too big in order to, to change it. Or especially we see that whenever there's a shift in perception towards identity and culture, this starts to shape an image. But then you start to think something about a specific country, region or city. So this is not only applicable to countries. And then ultimately, ultimately, this perception impacts the appeal and influence of countries, regions, and cities. So the willingness, you know, the appeal to, uh, to visit, uh, to invest, uh, to work, to study, and so on. So we wanted to understand if this current crisis that we're living in has actually, you know, if, if it's which type of crisis or which type of perceived crisis, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's <laughs> true, it's like what people think it is, um, which type of crisis it is, and if it's big enough or not in order to change image and then to change uh, um, uh, or alter uh, appeal and influence, right? So to do this, in order to do this, we have different data sets and we developed a major research uh, using LifeQuanty, which is one of our softwares, which we gathered more than 4,000 surveys. We analyzed, you know, this was amazing, this, this research, because we, we were able to gather, you know, at least 140 countries um, and when I say gather is like what people think about 140 countries, you know, up until uh, 80 countries were mentioned more than 15 times, uh, 20 times, um, and, and even 53, up to 53 countries, there were more than, than mentioned like 100, uh, 100 times. What this means is this is an amazing moment for, for nations because when we ask these kind of studies for countries, people normally mention top of mind, you know, 10 countries, 15, 20, K. Okay. It's a major thing, 30 countries max, but no one mentions that, that much. And in this study, you had 140, 83 were, were with a significant uh, uh, critical mass. So the spotlight is on nation brands. <laughs> the spotlight are on countries. The spotlight are, you know, this is, this is really important uh, for countries, which is also an opportunity for countries to change and to work on their perceptions. On the other side, we complemented this with digital demand, which is searches. So we have what people are searching, uh, is an indicator of what people are thinking about countries, okay? So here are the, the conclusions from our research. Um, and uh, one of the things we wanted to understand, the first thing we wanted to understand was if and how this has impacted uh, uh, nation brands as a whole. And we saw, and if this has impacted perception as a whole. And we saw that no one is indifferent. Approximately 68% of people said that their perceptions towards countries have changed. Right? And they have changed why? On how governments dealt with the crisis, how effective and how efficient they were in dealing with the crisis. So this is really telling us that from all the perceptions that were changed for good or for, for positive and for negative, it were related with public governance, how governments were competent and efficient in dealing with the crisis. We also see, if you remember the, the second type of perception, 5% of identity and culture was also affected and little to, to none to in terms of history and land. Overall, the world average, we can see that perceptions towards countries have worsened. So there's, is a, there's a result, a negative result, if we put all the perception changes, it was not for the best, it was for the worst. And uh, you see that in generally, the, generally speaking, this is 55%. Of course, if Ireland is here, it's because Ireland is on the 13%, of course, and New Zealand as well. Um, but just to understand, so there was a loss in terms of nation brands, right? So the, the way that governments dealt with this crisis impacted negatively uh, overall. 
So we wanted to dig deeper on this on this data and bear with us with the graphs and the numbers and we're here for you after if you want to any clarification. But we built a, a, a simple matrix, well, not that simple, but a, a clear matrix where we wanted to put all the countries based on the major research, right? On the major uh, quantitative survey uh, that we did with B2 uh, um, with live quantity. And on, when you see here the, the vertical uh, axis, you have the net positive mentions and the net negative mentions. So it's one minus the other. And on the horizontal one, you have the crisis negative ratio uh, and negative and positive. So you have the difference between, you know, how many people are saying versus positive versus negative, right? So, and when you put all the countries uh, together, you start to see a little bit what's happening. To add to this, we included one more variable, which is the volume of mentions. So what the circle you see around these countries, so in this case is China, uh, you know, Germany, Japan, Korea, uh, Singapore, uh, Ireland is here. So Ireland is, is, is very positive. You have Ireland, uh, Israel is also very positive, Denmark, Finland. But you see in the other extreme, like New Zealand, right? Like New Zealand had no, there was no negative ratio. There was a lot of people saying, talking about New Zealand for positive things, only positive. There was no negative towards New Zealand. But you see South Korea here, that there was the, 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 the brand was exposed to a larger amount of people. So people were saying, or came in top of mind in a, in a, in a different, uh, completely different uh, volume, right? So you start to see this and, you know, you look at China and you see China on his UK, his Brazil, Spain, Italy, US. And of course, this changes over time. But it's interesting to see what people are thinking on how governments dealt with this crisis. However, however, this graph, you know, we, I'm China, I look at this and I say, I did it, <laughs> I made it, right? It's like, or, you know, Japan or, or and so on. And what is interesting to see here is that this is not answering a fundamental question, which is, if this is actually the fact that people mention, yes, they did it well, did this did it well impacted positively perceptions about the country? Right? and about the, the brand as a whole, or the, the perception on the quadrant of governance, identity, uh, and culture, and history. And, life. and the answer is no. This is only giving part of the equation, part of the answer. We need to understand what is the right ratio, how many answers, positive answers, positive mentions I need to have facing the negative one. This is to, with the objective of this, to understand what is the right ratio of, of, of positive and negative. We have... Uh, uh, develop the concept of brand not. The brand not comes from the R not uh, concept, which is the what you know the World Health Organization uses and so on to assess the level of contamination, which is basically uh, the reproduction uh, uh, number uh, of a disease. So in this case of I don't know the current one that we're living in, the COVID is like you know the R not is three, which means for every infected person you can you infect other three. So that's the ratio. We have transposed this into nation brands and also to places, to countries, regions. And what is, uh, what is this? What is the brand not? The brand not is the correct ratio so that you understand as a country, region, or city, in this case it's for countries, of course, but it's also applicable for regions and cities. What is the right ratio so that your brand, your, the perceptions towards your country will not be altered for negative and positive, right? So in this case, we did this measurement uh, we did this we did this calculation and we understood that the brand not for this crisis which is the first thing you need to do which is okay what is the brand not of this crisis is 1.8 so what does this mean it means that for every negative uh, person that has a negative perception you need at least to have 1.8 to have a neutral effect so that you don't see your positive your, your perceptions being negatively impacted right so if i bring this down to the same matrix i was showing before the brand knot is this line that tells you that everything that will stay on the left is you were ne negatively impacted and everything that you see on the right is positively impacted. So what we're trying to say is that it is not enough to have the one-to-one -one ratio. You need to have, in this case, and you have to do this for every crisis, of course, you know that it's a 1.8. So to stay idle, you, need, you start... You, you, you start <laughs> About, and not just about water, the water, the water level is, 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 has risen, right? So 1.8 minimum, right? Now, I'm giving you the world average. I'm saying like, what's the level of this pandemic? But each country needs to have its own brand knot to understand 
okay, this is my brand not. And it's different because countries are different and perceptions about countries are different. And we made a calculation based on critical mass. And you see that some of the countries that I was mentioned before, where they fall in here, right? So, so here's China, China is here. And you see that the brand out of China is 2.9 based on you know, what people already perceive about China and so on. So they know, they say they start in a, they, they work in a different league and this pandemic and the crisis is, if, is it's a low level of toxic, you know, how toxic this, this, uh, this, this pandemic is. So in the case of China, they know, we know <laughs> that they have a 2.9 brand not, 2.9 brand not, which means they need to have at least almost three uh, individuals having a positive perception towards the country to, to, to beat the one that has a negative. And this is to stay idle, right? And you have this for the US and you have this for Germany. Germany is in a good position. So it's almost a one-to-one. -one. Now, uh, it also happens the other way around, which is this crisis is an opportunity for countries. And you see in this case, for instance, of, of, of South Korea, that works the other way around which is, is for every negative, you only need 0.9 uh, uh, positive. So the perceptions towards the country is so strong that they will be affected uh, less. So when you look at all this data, when you start looking, and, and again, it's a recommendation for countries is understand what's the brand not of the crisis and understand what's your brand not and how you're performing against it, right? And you see that in this case, China is not as positive as it was. And when you look at the final rank, and here we're able to understand uh, the 53 countries that I mentioned before that had critical mass. Now, Ireland is not here because there was not enough critical mass. So now, sorry, sorry about that, but I'm pretty sure that if you continue the study, we'll go up and up and up, and New Zealand as well. It was, in, uh, it was important to have the critical mass to make this calculation. But you see that, for instance, in this case of the crisis, in this specific crisis, if you apply the logic of the brand not, you can see that South Korea, perceptions towards South Korea and how South Korea dealt with the crisis have improved, right? So this is gonna, uh, this is positive for them. On the contrary, look at China that was looking so well on the other graph, how much it has decreased. So China lost uh, out of this and look at the US. So these perceptions, and you can see here, this is the top of performers and the worst performers, right? And, how, and when I say performers is like perceptions toward on how they dealt with the crisis and how this is impacting perceptions, right? Using the, uh, the, the brand of population. Now, the interesting thing, here comes the interesting thing which is the fun part, which is how much, okay, very nice, I understand, okay, that I'm not equal, so countries are not equal, perceptions affect me differently and based on where I come from, um, and the perception that people had before, so I have this number that will guide me, and, and it's great, but how is this affecting the appeal, and when I say appeal, uh, is, is this perception affecting me uh, in any way, the willingness to study, to live, to work, to visit uh, uh, the country, region or city? Although this study is for countries, but this is applicable for countries, regions and cities. And the answer is, uh, you know, what we want to see, like I said, is I want to see if this whole thing is affecting this by any means, right? And the brand not is affecting this by many means. So you see that generally speaking, the most volatile uh, dimension or the areas of the transactional value is affected or the, are the ones related to talent. So you see study and you see live and work. You see people with a brand not even of 1.8. It uh, this the brand not behaves differently within the dimension. So you see that the most the one that suffered most from this uh, 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 pandemic, and when I say suffered most, is from a crisis perception management. Right? You can see clearly that it's still study. Uh, live and work. So these are the ones that are most sensible and volatile uh, to this. So countries that score underneath this, are they will see a transactional uh, impact here. Also in buy and also in visit. They are more resilient and visit is also more resilient, but is also having a negative impact. So how the government behaves affects the willingness to visit, how, how efficient the government is, how, how the world sees how each country is going. So the question is, okay, so this is all very nice, but you know, are we saying that this is gonna stay forever? Are you saying that images have changed? Like when I look at this graph here again, is this gonna stay here or move? The answer is we don't know. And this is only because this is so unique. Uh, most likely, most likely once, once this is over, uh, it will come back to normal um, where they were. But when will that be? That's the thing. And that's the, the consideration we'd like countries and regions to, to look into, which is, although this is a perception, maybe image is not altered, we don't know. Um, you, you can see that there is a, a moment that there's, it, it means that there's a loss, there's like losing time and reaction 
and losing opportunities to generate. So you have less people interested to live, study and work and so on. And the other one we saw is if crisis and perceptions are affected here in identity and culture, they are not, in this case, the brand not, is way much more contaminated. It's way much more tax toxic, like 30% more. So countries that would have this uh, an, uh, change in perceptions for bad and for good, right? For positive and negative, you can see that in, in, the, in the identity part, they will see either better results or worse results, right? So here are just the key takeaways that I'd like to highlight and the conclusions. Now, before I go into that, it's one more slide. Uh, I would just like to highlight one thing, which is, look, I know that this whole thing about the brand not may look like it's a theoretical concept, but in the end, this is an amazing formula. So not just for, uh, you know, crisis management or for public governance or for, um, uh, you know, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but also for tourism, also for FDI, because it, basically the brand not is a ratio. So every time you have an issue or a crisis or whatever, you have a number that you can talk with your constituents, you can talk with your ministries and say, look, this is the ratio we have to beat in order so that we don't see everything affected and we don't see the dimensions, the transactional dimensions affected as well. So it's, it's a language that even, you know, and we all know about this whole thing about nation brands and place brands, it's complicated to explain and so on. You can see that this is a language that non-experts will understand. So you can talk with your constituents about this. You can talk about, hey, with your government and tourism, you know, now you can talk with central government and say, look, this is the brand not. We have to be above you because otherwise we suffer from a tourism perspective because that's the appeal towards uh, visiting, right? I said this for the negative, but I can also tell this for the positive. So this can also be applicable for decisions whenever countries, regions, and cities want to implement a policy or they want to, hey, let's do an Olympics. Oh, right, okay, that's great for the placemaking part and so on. But what is the brand not that this is, what is going to be the benefit? I know we know it's going to be positive, but how much positive it is going to be and how much is going to impact the willingness to visit, study, work, and so on. So number one, the, 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 the key takeaway, one of the key takeaways is like, it's important to calculate what's the brand not of the crisis or projects in general, right? So that you have as a reference. We understood that this specific crisis has a high brand not. It's extremely toxic. Most nation brands lost. Uh, in here, right? And uh, the third one is that all dimensions are affected ne negatively. The most resilient ones are tourism and buy from, but talent is really, really affected. So the ones that perform well, will see also a, got a good positive impact there. And fourth, um, it is important to understand and countries to understand and governments to understand that you need to measure and understand how perceptions are evolving in those three clouds that I showed, which had to do with public governance, with identity and culture and history and land and everything is kind of in there. So it's a summary to see how much, so that the one in the middle, which is identity and culture is the one that is really negative. And just to finalize, we saw that countries, regions and cities, and this case is for countries, with a stronger brand are more resilient to, to crisis. So this is to say, when I say stronger brand is like just in the concept of image and so on, but also the ones that manage the brand and the ones that are, when I say the brand, is try to work with perceptions and, and reputation. And also is a tool, the brand is not a decorative thing, but the brand strategy is a tool to, in terms of crisis, in moments of crisis, for countries, regions, and cities to look for answers. So it's really important that you look into the brand strategy, not as a decorative thing, but as something that can give you the answers on how you should behave as a country, a region, uh, or a city. And that's basically it. I hope you were able to digest all this, but anyways, the report will be available for anyone who wants to consult. Thank you, Jose. Thanks so much. And it, it is quite difficult to digest on the first presentation. I, I've, I've seen it, so I, I have a little bit of a better idea. Niall, you had a, a previous view. Did you have any questions that you wanted to come back to Jose with before we talk a little bit more about Ireland in detail? Uh, it was interesting. I, I and, and good afternoon, everybody. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, I, I hadn't seen it in that level of detail. The one thing that struck me, Jose, as you went through the charts, was that the people who had the weakest um, brand not seemed to have been the countries that were the slowest to react to the crisis, so to speak. Um, when you look at the U.S., U.K., Italy, Spain, um, this is a type of crisis we never had in the Western world. I mean, I remember when SARS came in 2003, I was in tourism then, but that happened somewhere else. You know, that was over in China, it was Hong Kong, and that sort of stuff just doesn't happen in Europe. 
But the speed by which this came upon us um, is it, such that the governments that seem to have acted the fast have the highest brand or score because that meant that essentially you had a very low level of infection and death. But the, the, the bigger countries that maybe maybe perhaps take their reputation for granted hadn't appreciated the speed at which this traveled. Would you agree with that? Completely. And, and you see that the majority of and the reasons why uh, the countries uh, um, or people perception or how the perception in what way they were altered had to do with how governments, uh, how efficient and how well they have dealt with the crisis. So how competent were they? So absolutely, it, it completely influences uh, the perception. So I absolutely agree. That's what research is indicating. And that's, I think that's the sort of theme of some of the questions that are coming through. Um, so Sophia, um, I can't pronounce your surname, I'm sorry, Sophia, um, asks, what's the relation between the brand naught and the place brand equity? Um, you know, so have you seen that those places that had a really strong position in terms of global perceptions have survived better? Or as Niall said, if they took it for granted, they haven't. Yeah, uh, excellent question. So definitely it influences the brand naught because one of the things that is important to understand the brand not is the brand not varies from situation to situation, from crisis to crisis. Uh, so it's not one thing, like you say, taken for granted that it's overall. Now, in specific things, you may have the even if you have a strong brand, may vary very much. Uh, and the other thing is, so the brand not of the specific issue, crisis, project, what have you, and then how you perform against that brand not and how. What is your specific brand not? So, so definitely, of course, that the brand equity uh, definitely uh, influences the. Uh, it's one of the reasons why the brand not may go down uh, or up. But it's not a standstill formula. Uh, I mean, it's a standstill formula, but the, the number is going to vary very much for different situations. Um, and I just as in terms of the. Um, process of the research, the methodology is the word I'm looking for. Um, Ronnie, Ronnie Weiss has asked, um, how has Thailand stayed positive despite the coups? That they, you know, they seem to be an outlier. Have you got any comments on Thailand before we move into Ireland? Uh, no, so, so we don't, I mean, you have to understand this, like we can give you this information, you just drop us an email. We, we could only go into, uh, uh, like I said, we had 140 countries, we had to go deeper into the calculations and each country have their own reason. I mean, if you ask us, there's certain, there was there was really striking for us. Like we saw El Salvador, which is a country that you look at and, and you know that in Central America is a country that you know the reputation about you know crime rates and so on is not so because of crime rates and so on from their history is not so good. But you saw that they have a very good amount of so the brand not was good and they actually performed well. And we started to understand and we go deeper and we saw that it had to do again how the new president, the new millennial, is working on it and how he's facing crime and how is he dealing with the situation and so on. So. So again, uh, don't take it for granted. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that is very important, which is the way that you work on the situation, how effective, how, how efficient you are with the situation, changes perceptions. Okay, so and that has to do with being competent, with being strong, and you know, um, uh, being professional and being competent, basically, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you're still sharing your screen, Jose. So if you are, perhaps you can. I am. I am. I am. That would be great. Um, you want me to stop? Yes, please because then everyone can see our lovely faces a little yeah. bit better. <laughs> um, Amanda Calvo from Saffron has asked a question, which I know Rebecca would have been the person to answer. So, um, and I, I know Jose that you've spoken to her before now, and I've, I've spoken to her many times before as well. So Amanda has asked, um, Spain has a strong nation brand, obviously governance has let it down with regards to its crisis perceptions, but can you give us an example of how nations can lean into their brand strategy to find our answers and guidance in times of crisis? And I would say that New Zealand is the perfect example of how that's been achieved. Um, and if, Amanda, you look on our website um, and, and use the search function to, to look for Rebecca or New Zealand, and also I'm gonna do a little interview with her because she's not managed to make it today. Um, but she has presented for us before and talked about the values that are the basis of the New Zealand story and the New Zealand brand and everything that comes out of their prime minister's mouth you can see relates back to those values. Uh, and, and that is how that's worked. Um, I want to 